Okay. It is April 13th. This is Robert Smith. I'm the town manager on Windermere. Um, this is the Oakdale cut through speeding concerns. This is a public presentation. This is brought on by some, several residents that live on Oakdale. Um, and the reason that we want to meet tonight is just to get your input on what you're seeing, what you're hearing, and maybe some suggestions on how to correct the issue. Um, we'll be having another meeting on the 26th, I believe, of April for those that were unable to make it tonight. Um, and we'll take those comments and those concerns, take it to the long range planning. And then after we take it to long range planning, uh, which will be a public meeting, we'll have it on Zoom as well. Uh, we'll take it to town council for a workshop. Uh, I understand everybody's frustration with, you know, the, the appearance of cut through traffic and we're trying to release some of that traffic through uh, some initiatives, either through the once the sales tax and we'll see how that goes and I'll describe that. Um, and also with working our, with our local jurisdictions. Uh, but first things first, I want to present some of the facts that we've uh, come to realize since I think 2017 when we um, actually started taking a look at this in 2014, but in 2017 when we started taking some counts on Oakdale Street. Um, so again, this is a presentation. We'll make sure that it's available. It is on the uh, town website as part of the agenda packet. And if you just hold some of your questions till after, we'll be more happy to stay as long as we uh, just need to, uh, to answer those questions. So if I can, have everybody mute right now, uh, just so we don't get any background noise. If not, if you have an Alexa, I'm going to set your alarm for like 3 a.m. All right. Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right. So the area that we're looking at is, again, Oakdale Street, south of 6th, all the way uh, south of 12th Avenue. Um, this is where we've had a lot of concerns um, with mostly some of the cut through traffic that we studied back in 2014 to 2017. Um, the actual agenda was submitted last week, so I'm not sure where the uh, the issue was with uh, Jim and Peg, but uh, you can keep those questions over in the chat and I'll take a look at them when we go through, but the agenda was always posted. Uh, well ahead of time, uh, so I'm not sure where the confusion was, but can we have a separate meeting that's going to be on the 26th uh, in case you have any other uh, questions. Um, and again, this is south of 6th, north of 12th, same areas that we've taken a look at in the past, especially for cut through traffic. If those of you that aren't aware of the traffic study that we did uh, several years ago, again, we started getting a lot of complaints about uh, issues from um, not only the cut through from other areas, uh, but also the cut through, meaning that they're utilizing um, local roadways to get from point A to point B. So when you look at a origin destination using GPS, people would, um, we have about 75% of the traffic that's coming through town is coming from Horizons West. It's not but coming from the town of Wind River Development. Um, and then when we looked at the interior roadways, uh, most of the cut through traffic was actually residents themselves and not the uh, cut through that you, would perceive it to be. Uh, a lot of people disagree with the data. And so we've tried to do some, you know, different things as far as, you know, um, doing the whack-a-mole, meaning that we're put up signage and stuff like that to try to curtail some of the cut-through traffic during certain times, especially during the peak hours. Uh, but again, once you start clogging um, an area here, then it's gonna open up to stick it somewhere else. So Again, it's, it's a bunch of whack-a-mole right now, but um, let me go through the data and then we get through some of your uh, questions and concerns. And we have a couple of videos that we wanna show some of the people too, uh, as it relates to speed. <clears throat> so the most recent study that we did, um, we did it for a month. And that was um, from January 11th to uh, February 14th. So it's 34 days. Uh, during that time frame, 89% of the people that were on Oakdale, um, were within the normal speed conditions. When I say normal speed conditions, um, the speed limit out there, I believe is what, 15 miles an hour. So you cannot, and Chief is probably gonna kill me by telling me this, but um, we cannot give a ticket to anybody that's doing less than five miles an hour. So the acceptable speed limits is going to be anything within that five mile zone. So between 15 and 20 miles an hour. Um, so 89% of those people that were driving down your roadway um, we're meeting that speed limit. And we'll get into the 89% on how important and why important that, why that number is really important. Um, and the total counts is 8,085 during that 34 day period. So that came out to be about 230 cars per day. 77% um, were weekday and 23% on the weekends. Um, 
and you had 10 anomalies where you had two cars passing at the same time. Um, sometimes you have like a bird flying through this, sometimes not a bird, that's a separate radar uh, detection, but uh, you'll get some anomalies, but uh, most of the case you'll get accurate readings to where you're not having two cars pass at the same time. And Chief Ogden, I believe is on the call as well and can um, confirm those anomalies. So when you look at average daily trips, um, you can see the times where you have the peak hours. Um, so you have it in the morning starting at about 7 a.m. all the way pretty much throughout the day. Um, and again, it's people going to and from to pick up their kids from school, mostly, mostly when they're in elementary school, or they're going up Chase and taking a ride on 6th to get to uh, the Dr. Phillips area. And then it drops down later at night. Um, you can see the ADTs, whether it's going to be 20 trips, uh, all lanes combined. And again, that's going to and from both ways. Um, and then average daily trips for the day of the week. Friday is always the most popular day. And you can see you're looking at about 300 trips per day on that entire 24 hour period. Um, and speeds, this is a really important one here is we get a lot of calls and text messages um, relative to, I saw something going 60 miles an hour. I saw something going 50 miles an hour. Um, but the data that we collected showed that the majority of people that are on your roadway are actually abiding by or within that little um, range of adhering to the speed limit. And we're gonna show some videos as far as what optics may look like as far as, okay, who's speeding and who's not speeding. Uh, but the majority of the people that are on the roadway, according to our data, and we're not disagreeing with anybody's, um, you know, views or, or anything like that, today is just provide the facts and then get the information from you guys as well. Um, but most of the people, according to the data, show that they're actually within the speed limits. Um, so Oakdale Street and 6, and this is coming from uh, Chief and uh, myself, so as you can see, the vehicle speeds are within the 85 for 85th percentile range uh, continuously and more recently even higher at 89%, uh, which is excellent from a data standpoint. Occasionally we will have some anomalies with super high speeds, which indicates two opposing vehicles striking the device at the same time um, per factory instructions. On one occasion, the counter tubes pulled apart so we couldn't get an accurate speed, but still received an overall number. The recent data is showing 34 days of activity, which is the longest we've ever collected data uh, to this date. And then with the 85, 85th percentile, um, the 85th percentile speed is the speed at or below which 85% of the drivers will operate with, op with open roads and favorable conditions. Um, so no matter what it looks like, the way it is, if you're within the 85th percentile, um, you're going to adhere to that speed limit or within that acceptable range of the speed limit. The uh, assumption underlying the 85th uh, percentile speed is that most drivers will operate their speed vehicle at speeds they perceive to be safe. Speed limits set above or below the 85th percentile speed will create unsafe conditions due to speed differential. Um, as some drivers adhere strictly to the law, while other drive drivers um, they naturally speed. Uh, traffic engineers use the 85th percentile speed as a standard to set the speed limit at a safe speed, minimizing crashes and promoting uniform flow along a corridor. Uh, now, most of you not, may not be aware of that in order for us to actually have the speed limits that we currently have on those side streets, we actually had to do a traffic study uh, to justify that. If we were not able to justify that, we couldn't hold up any citations in the court. So what influences the, the, um, uh, the 85th percentile? Um, with the de definition of the 85th percentile speed, it was seen that uh, the sign posted speed limit of the street would be highly influential in determining the 85th percentile speed. However, the exact opposite is the case. Uh, a deeper dive into the 85th percentile speed helps to reveal why it is a major consideration in determining a street's posted speed limit. As described above, the 85th percentile speed defines the speed that 85th percentile of drivers um, will at or below under the free flowing conditions. Most people don't drive uh, according to the posted speed limit, but account for the visual aspects of the street. So the feel of the street um, and the visual 
factors that include speeds can include lane and shoulder configurations with presence of curves, presence of vertical and horizontal curves, uh, site distance and obstructions, presence of surrounding developments to the street, access management characteristics, characteristics and medians, turn lane configurations. Uh, the feel for the street can be simple as being a regular route that some drivers have used for years, uh, the travel through a busy commercial area or driving a route with an open access of block by block intersection spacing. With so many factors impacting the speeds of a street, the 85th percentile speed became a good metric that can quantify um, these variables and put them into a useful number. So pretty much if you're within, especially 89th percentile, that is a positive because the incremental 10% or 11% that you're gonna have um, either are not continuously using the roadway or um, they're not gonna follow the law anyway. Um, so by having that high threshold is a good positive based on the numbers that we collected for that period of time. So previous studies that we've done uh, on Oakdale and 8th uh, were from May 4th to May 5th, which is five days. And it came out to be about uh, an average of 224 per day. And if you, most of the drivers were within the 85 percentile. Uh, Oakdale on 8th on April 29th through April, or April 9th through April 15th of 2021, pretty much a month ago, um, that was an average over six days. So you had an average of about 158 cars per day. Um, the device tubes weren't separated or were separated, so we couldn't get accurate speeds, just the number of vehicles. Uh, and then it was reset again in the May uh, timeframe that you saw above. Uh, so the counts were down again, we had the pandemic, um, but you can see with the counts when we show you an overall um, um, list, pre-pandemic numbers actually are higher than the numbers that we have currently today. Um, then we did one on October of 2019, and um, again, that is before the pandemic hit. Um, so 88% were within the norm, and the total count was about 237 per day. Oakdale on 8th on April of 2019, the total count was 884, and 94% uh, were within the norm. And again, 94% is a huge number. Um, then October of 2017 on Oakdale and 8th, a uh, total of 555 cars and they had 138 per day, 85% were uh, within the norm. And Oakdale and 10th in May of 2016, uh, about 367 cars as you're further down um, and 85% were within the norm up to that. So when you take a look at some of the numbers, you can see that in 2017, you had 137 uh, cars in 2019, pre-pandemic, you were at uh, 237 cars per day. In 2021, you were at 224. And in 2022, you're at 230. Again, we're just providing the facts. We're not here to argue the facts, but we're here to try to solve the issue. Um, some of the things that we created to help solve the issue or to try to prevent some of the cut through traffic was including signage. Again, this isn't an issue that was caused by the town. It's been caused by uh, other jurisdictions with some of their development. And we're just having to react to those. Uh, so what the town council wanted to do was take baby steps in correcting the issue, um, as, as opposed to going to nuclear options as far as creating pocket parts, closing roadways, doing one way only, stuff like that. So uh, they implemented various signage and you can see the existing, existing signage on 7th, 8th, 9th, and 12th, where we restrict the right turns um, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Those are the peak hours that we typically see because people are coming up chase in the morning and they're cutting over and then going across. In the afternoon, they're pretty much either staying on six uh, because it's gonna be hard for them to uh, take a left onto Maine to get back on a chase. Um, and that's based on the Kimley Horn Associates study that we did previously where it showed the origin destination to where most of the traffic is going uh, north in the morning and then in the afternoon staying south. But the cut through traffic is mostly happening in the morning uh, where people are using the uh, the side streets. And again, this demonstrates some of the, the, the issues that came up uh, in 2018 when we did the Kimley Horn and Associates study. Um, and this basically goes through the analysis that was done. It showed that, again, the origin destination from outside the area was coming from people that are from the west of us. 
Um, and then in the afternoon, it's going to be east, of course. And then actually the cut through traffic that's going down the side roads uh, wasn't as significant as people thought at the time. So there's various things that we looked at as far as uh, conceptual cut throughs, which was creating barriers, creating pocket parks, so on and so forth. But the discussion items that we want to bring tonight, and I went through the analysis pretty fast, and there's some other things that I'm going to show you, um, was right now for a single family home. And there's about 50 homes on Oakdale from 6th all the way down past 12th. Um, for every single family home, the average trips per day is 10. That's an engineering standard. So right now, just based on all of Oakdale, um, if you're just taking it from a data standpoint, that would equal about 500 trips per day on that roadway. Now, if you cut that in half, that is gonna be about 250 trips, which we're still below on Oakdale Street. Now, when you say a trip, it's not just one way going out, it's leaving, coming back. So figure that, you know, if you're taking your kids to school, if you're going to work, you know, those trips add up. And so the average daily trip count is 10. But if you, even if we cut that in half, we're still below that trip count. Um, and then again, based upon that 2018 study, it didn't show that there was really an issue as far as local cut through traffic. Uh, but the town council directed staff to go ahead and install those uh, no cut, those no right turn only signs in 2020. Uh, and it was kind of hard to quantify if those really worked because again, the pandemic hit and everything was shut down pretty much from March on. Um, but based on the um, traffic studies that we've done, um, the traffic really hasn't increased significantly and the speeds haven't increased, um, which again, may be contrary to what you're seeing every day and that's what we're here to discuss. The solutions that we can talk about, um, again, is relieving the pressure points. We've been working with the county to say, listen, you know, um, we know you're looking at the monthly sales tax, but regardless of that, we need help. Um, you know, you, you've created this problem in Horizons West that is putting a pressure point on us. There's no parallel relievers that people can utilize to avoid the town of Windermere. Um, so let's try to see what we can do to get them in and get them out, you know, for lack of a better term. Um, so we're looking at doing some improvements at 6th Avenue, doing some improvements at Chase and Main, and doing some improvements at Windermere Road and uh, Main Street as well. And people might say, well, why are you going to make it easier for people to get in and out? Um, you know, they might use this as a cut through and more, might create them to use this, you know, it might entice them to be, okay, we're just going to use them as a cut through forever. They're already here. Uh, they're already using us as a cut through. There's really no options to do a uh, parallel reliever to any of the roadways that they're currently using, especially with the time frames that it would be to delay them to get to another parallel reliever. So, you know, the thing is to get them in and get them out. Um, that way, if it's a smoother way in and out, the less they'll utilize those side roads uh, for cut through traffic. Um, in addition to that, we can take a look at additional calming devices. question in us, so we're trying to do whatever we can do. And then continue to work with surrounding jurisdictions on trying to figure out what they can do to help us relieve some of those situations. Robert, we lost you for a minute there. Oh, my network was unstable. It's probably the kids jumping on um, <laughs> Disney Plus or something like that. Um, but let me get into, this is provided to me today by Sergeant Bonk. Um, and this just shows a quick data point as far as you know, what we've done in the past, and we will go ahead and provide this on our uh, town website uh, tomorrow. Uh, but it can show you that you know the average speeds that we received for this long amount of time between January and February. Um, you know, you had the average daily trips for a week was two sixty nine, on the weekend was one eighty nine. The average speed was eleven point five, um, fifty percent speed eleven or point two speed. 15 was 67%, and then 85% were within the uh, 20 miles or 19 miles below. Um, and again, we can go through all the other data that we have with the traffic plan, everything like that. <clears throat> and then before I get to your questions.
All right. Um, and then one thing I wanted to show you guys before we get into the uh, Q and A is I'm going to show you some videos. Okay. And then in the comment box, I want you to tell me how fast these cars are going. Okay. So hopefully this will work. Can everybody see the video? Nope, not yet. Well, nope. Not yet. Ah, the joys of technology. <laughs> you guys see it now? Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to play, and then I want you to tell me in the chat box how fast this car is going. How fast is it going? Bernie says 17. 15, 10. All right. 15 miles an hour. So they're actually doing the speed limit. All right, now let's get to this video. Can you guys see this one? Yes. All right. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Guess the speed on this one. We got 25, 20, 18. Twenty-five miles an hour. So you can see how, again, a lot of people would say, well, I see people going 40, I see people going 50 miles an hour. It's really hard to go that fast on these roadways. And that's not what the data shows, but this demonstrates kind of like when you see cars going by, um, if they're actually going fast or not that fast. Uh, let me try to pull up another video. This might be the same one that I'm showing. All right, so that's one I just showed. And then here is one. Well, I just showed you the answer, 30 miles an hour. So thank you, Nancy, that was a lower guess, but um, with with when you talk about the 85th percentile and then we're in 89 percent against the width of the road condition of the road visibility that all restricts people on how they're going to um, travel on your roadway um, so with the dirt roadways again it helps but it also gives kind of an optical illusion uh, relative to how fast people are actually going um, the cloud of dust is helpful yes it is because again when people see dust kick up they think it's you know people are just hauling butt down the roadway but again with the and we're not trying to argue um whether you see people speeding or not see people speeding it's just showing you that you know sometimes it looks like people are going faster than they actually are because everybody usually says okay somebody's going by me 40 miles an hour 50 miles an hour but we're just trying to give you that visual impact of what actually the speeds are um let me go ahead and reduce this or close this get back to presentation. Okay. Now let me get through some of the Q and A's. Uh, and again, we're here as long as you guys want. Um, Robert, it would seem that releasing agenda a couple of hours ahead of meeting prevents and analyzing your data. Again, we had this thing up for a week. Um, if not, actually we had it up probably for two weeks. Um, this is one of the first ones I worked on um, in April. So I would say it would probably be up by April 3rd or April 4th. 
Um, so it's been up for a while. And again, you're gonna have another opportunity on the 26th to make additional comments. Uh, what were the location of the sensors? I'll have to defer that to Jason Bonk as well as Tanya, but um, Jason, you're on. That's Sergeant Bonk, by the way, for the Winnemar Police Department. Yes, I'm here. So the first one that was for 34 days was on Oakdale Street. It was on six, uh, at between 6th and 7th. And then the one just right after that was on Oakdale Street, north of 11th. And then somebody put on that was a year ago during COVID. We understand. Um, but if you take a look at the numbers that we allocated or we actually did the, the um, um, the study. It was pre-COVID, during COVID, and after COVID. So we had uh, numbers from 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21, and 22. Um, so again, you can see that fluctuation of numbers. And it did seem that we saw a drop in numbers from 2022 to uh, 2019. And again, you know, that is, we're not post-pandemic, um, but you do still see, um, you know, getting that, that constant calls and saying hey listen you know we're seeing an increase in traffic and so on and so forth but all we can do is provide the facts we just you know you guys see it day in day out we're trying to be sympathetic to that as much as possible um tony ellie moore she's the public works director um yes a comparison first set was current devices placed in locations oakdale six thank you tanya so all the cars cut through 11th now um don't know um, you know, most of the cars that we typically see or you guys see, you know, if they get on chase, they, you know, they typically, I don't see them going straight down 12th and then taking 11th or taking uh, Oakdale all the way down. Uh, most of the times that we see them are probably when they get to 7th um, or 6th and then they cut through and then they go around and then they get over to 6th later on. Love the signs and one ways. Let us let's keep the ball rolling. Traffic went from 137 a day to 230 a day. That's a huge increase. And again, that was um, when you looked at the numbers, that was mostly a four or five day count to a 34 day count. But the average daily trips again went down uh, from 2019 till when we have them right now. We lost you. Um, welcome back. Uh, additional calm, last we heard. It's moving in slow motion. Apologize for that. I believe my kids. And most of the guesses as far as the speed, no, you don't get a um, prize. And everybody here, you know, guessing the speed, understandable. Um, but we're just trying to demonstrate, you know, when a car is driving by, it kicks up dust, it sometimes looks like it's faster than it's actually going, but you guys guess pretty much correctly. I get the point, but really 25 is very dangerous for our children. Understand, um, you know, anything that's over 20, um, we can give a ticket. Anything that's under 20, we're not able to give a ticket uh, because again, you have that um, um, with the radar certification, you have a five mile an hour window. And as you can see, you're at the 89th percentile and it's, yes, we can do more enforcement so on and so forth, but you're trying to, you know, divert all of your attention from a law enforcement standpoint to one little area where there's a perceived problem, but based on the, the data that we have, it's not really an actual problem based on the data. But again, we're here to listen from you. And if you disagree, that's fine. And we'll do what we can to try to accommodate that. Understand again with the 20 miles an hour, I'm going through the, the comments. Uh, the comment is uh, we live it every day. We know because of the amount of dust that kicks up, try to pull a dog out of the street or a small kid at 20 miles or 20 plus miles per hour. Um, it's with the 15 mile an hour speed limit. Again, it was hard to justify that through KHA study and uh, we do what we can to try to enforce as much as possible. Um, if you see dust, they're over the limit. Not necessarily because again, when you see the 15 miles an hour or the 
20 miles an hour again with that little window. You saw the dust kick up on those. The issue goes far beyond speed. We can talk about that. What about blowing through the stop sign? Running the stop sign is also an issue. If everyone actually stopped, it would be hard for the cars to get that high up the speed. I've sat on my porch for a couple of hours the afternoon and counted the number of cars that actually stopped. And sometimes it was no more than one car per hour. The agenda packet didn't provide information that you provided. You've done a good job making some changes to keep people off the roads, but to us here, we even need, we need even more. Today's the best traffic will ever be. Closing 6th and Oakdale is good. Start to deter, deter some of some and see what it would do. We can try and move on from there. Any progress is better than no progress. I live in 11th. They are always cutting through. When they when Maine is stopped, how often does WPD sit on Oakdale and monitor the speed? That's a good question. Might want to have people raise hands if they want to speak instead of type. Are we allowed to talk? We can't count on the police to be present constantly. We need to do something more than as permanent. Okay, we'll get into some one-on-one -on -one conversations and we'll go through some of the other um, comments. We do have uh, Chief Sergeant uh, Bonk on as well as our Public Works Director. But again, we're here to get all your, your comments and all your suggestions. And we'll get the same comments and uh, suggestions on the 26th. And we'll present those to Long Range Planning and then also take those to um, uh, Town Council. Um, but again, it's how much pain do you want to inflict on yourselves to reduce the amount of cut-through traffic or the perception of speeding in your area. In addition to that, understand too that what I have to present to town council and to the residents that are not on this call or not or may not be in favor of this, which might be your neighbors, um, I have to show them definitive facts and evidence to demonstrate why we are making these changes. Um, so with that understood, I'll go ahead and kick it off to people that are raising their uh, hand icons and we'll start off with Carrie Sharp. Hey, Robert, it's uh, David Sharp. Actually. Oh, David Sharp. How you doing? <laughs> Good. So a couple, couple things I'd like to uh, address. Let me first start with the, the no right turn signs. So uh, a couple things, uh, observations there. So we've left 10th and 11th open. Uh, so there are no signs there that prohibit uh, a right turn. And, and then the data that you presented, um, what was interesting to me is, is that this isn't just a two hour issue. This is an all day issue. So I, I don't think un unless we're thinking about not allowing a right turn at all, um, I, I don't think the no right turn signs are, are going to uh, provide much benefit for us on Oakdale, certainly in the, in the morning traffic. Now, in the evening, um, we have the opposite. We have folks going the other way, so, and we don't have any signs that prohibit that. And then the other issue with the signs is it shifts the burden to our police department to enforce. And unless we're talking about a long-term presence um, throughout the entire day, I don't think the signs are, are a long-term solution. So what would be your solution? Well, um, I'm getting to that. Okay. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to point out, or, or at least address, is, is why do we have to accept the 89th percentile or the 85th percentile? Because, you know, on a 15 mile an hour road, if, if, if five over is kind of the norm, that's 30 percent or 30 something percent over the stated speed limit. If you're on a 30 mile an hour road, you're, 
you know, you're at 16%. So the, the data, so we're allowing 11 to 15% of 8,000 trips on a monthly basis to go 20 miles an hour or more through our side streets. I think if, you know, when I look at the data, I look at we're allowing, or we're not allowing, but there are 700 to call it a thousand trips that people are going over 20 miles an hour down Oakdale and the surrounding areas. So the long-term fix is we've got to stop the, the peel offs all the way through um, and down Oakdale. Um, so, and, and I agree with you, it's gonna, it's gonna cause some grief for us probably because we will have to sit in longer lines of traffic, but we will get our roads back and our safety back from 900 people speeding down Oakdale or six or uh, seventh, eighth, any of the side streets. So the longer term solution, we have to, and I know long range planning looked at diverters and blocking off roads. I think it's time to revisit that and talk to and include everybody that's in this quadrant, not just those of us on Oakdale, because it will impact everybody, whether you're on 7th or Bessie or 8th or Oakdale. So uh, I think we've got to look at more permanent solutions that don't just shift an enforcement um, position to our police force, because I don't think they're going to have the time or um, resources to be here as much as we would like them to be here. So that's my solution. So your solution would be to block roadways? Well, it, either you, well, ultimately, I think you have to look at blocking off any access point onto Sixth Avenue. But then you're also, I think, going to have to look at 12th Avenue as it dumps out onto Chase, because I would envision people as they're sitting in traffic trying to exit out on Chase Road will peel off on 8th, beeline it down Oakdale, and try to pop out at 12th. So, so you're I talking think about blocking all access on 6th or Main Street? on 6th. Okay. So Oakdale. So you dead end all of those roads. Yeah, Magnolia, on. Bessie, and 7th. Otherwise, I mean, if you block one, they're just gonna, like we've seen with the no turn signs, they're just gonna, they're like water, right? They're gonna find another way out. Okay. So blocking roadways on 6th. So make sure I write these down so I can. Well, you know, and I also think 12, you've got to look at 12 too. Okay. And we're here to gather solutions um, and possible, you know, stuff to curtail some of these issues. So uh, any idea is a good idea and we'll take those to LRP and we'll have them studied internally as well to make sure, okay, well, you know, how would that impact A, B, or C? Um, example is if there is an accident um, that's north of 7th, you know, and how do we direct traffic from um, 8th onto 6th Avenue? If there is a permanent barrier, how do we do that? Um, do we have to move them all the way into Forest Street, go around, then go into the roundabout? Also with solid waste pickup, they're going to have to do backups, uh, stuff like that. So those would be other factors that we have to consider when we're looking at blocking roadways. And then also how receptive the residents are going to be to that uh, once you start blocking off roadways. Because again, everybody on here that is in favor of it, the minute I start blocking off roadways, I can guarantee you there's gonna be the same amount of people at a town council meeting saying, why did you block away 
block my roadways. That's why we're having these public input meetings, which they can say yay or nay, or we can um, present some of the issues that we've seen, you know, and maybe test them out um, as we go along. So um, as far as Mr. Sharp's idea, would be blocking the road off of 6th and 12th Avenue. Is that correct? Well, I, I, I think you have to address um, 12th. And, you know, I agree with you. I think, um, you know, we've got to get buy-in from, from everyone um, because there'll be some pain for us. But the alternative is, is not a, a good result as far as I'm concerned. And if, I don't know that you have to block 12th day one, but I think you should anticipate that if we start seeing the evening traffic, right? Peeling off on 9th or 10th, trying to cut off three blocks of traffic, we've got to have a contingency built in there that you know, we, can, we can address that too. Okay. And also with some of these comments and some of these uh, suggestions, I can create a, a poll for the next meeting and we can go through those and see what are the most popular, what are the uh, most unpopular uh, types of avenues. But thank and, you, Mr. and Robert, real quick to touch mm -hmm. on your point, I don't want to hog the whole time, but as far as solid waste and stuff goes, they're, they're already backing up and uh, up and down the, the streets around here anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I don't, I don't think that's a huge issue. They're yeah. doing it already. But we have to just you know, think of things like that and also contingencies, like, you know, if we have to fix that continuous pothole that's on six, right? When you take that right, how would we divert uh, traffic to MOTs, uh, so on and so forth. So it's just as part of your idea, we have to figure out, okay, well, what may be impacted and how do we rectify that through our master plan of how we're going to divert the traffic. So I understand. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. And I miss you at the meetings, man. I come by and say hi. I right. will. All right, Brittany. Okay. Hey, sorry. I'm getting my kids to swim. So if it sounds right. loud, hey, that's why. Believe me, <laughs> uh, I can sympathize with that. My kids are eating right now. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. All right. I just wanted to talk a little bit. Um, I'm new to Oakdale in the last five years, but I, I grew up in town here and it's just getting worse and worse. And I think we all understand that, um, that it's not our town's fault, but people have to get by the lakes. So this is the only way. So I think our point, I know with neighbors that I've spoken to is um, we just got to keep people off the dirt roads. You know, the roundabouts worked. I remember we all fought that, thought that was a really horrible idea. Um, a lot of the residents, but look how great they are. They get people through town quickly um extending them great adding one to chase great but we've got to keep people off the dirt roads i know that the data doesn't show that people are speeding but they are they're not stopping it's not safe i can't let my kids play out front you know unless i'm sitting right there by the road and it'd be great if i could let them walk the dog in the afternoon or in the morning but i can't and uh and so permanent closures is great I know that you guys started doing this right before COVID and I don't think you had the support because our world shut down, but I think people are ready to, and it might be inconvenient, but we're willing to suffer. Okay. And I think you're gonna find that the majority are. So I love what Mr. Sharp said, closing all of six. Um, I love it. I think if there's an accident and you have to reroute, we'll figure it out or people can wait or, you know, heaven forbid they find a different way home. But. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know that we shouldn't close just because of these problems. I also think you'll find that people are willing to put in some somewhat of a cul-de-sac for emergency vehicles, for the garbage men. I mean, I know I would be willing to give up a portion of my property to put something in to allow for that. I okay. think you're going to find that a lot more people are too. Okay, so the possibility of roundabout, not roundabout, the cul-de-sacs at the end of uh, the roadways that touch six. All right. Thank you for your input. And then just so everybody's aware, what we're thinking about 6th Avenue is um, creating continuous turns, um, kind of what you see like in the villages when you're trying to go to some of the commercial districts, and then possibly continuous turns over at um, Chase and Main, and the same thing around about at um, 
Windermere Road and Chase. Because what happens when you have the stop signs, it meters people. Um, so you have no gaps. So you may think that people are intentionally going a certain distance from each other so you can't get out onto the main streets. Um, but by having those new improvements the, and the metering will be gone, you'll have larger gaps for you to get out to either take a right or take a left. If your concern is, okay, well, how am I going to get onto um, Main Street and take a left if everybody's on six? But if we were to make those improvements, um, that'll hopefully give you some relief on that. But our first pressure point that we would have to take a look at would be 6th Avenue and Main, uh, because if we were to relieve the two pressure points, north and south, it's just gonna create more congestion at 6th. All right. Um, Walters, I'm guessing. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you for all your efforts here and uh, Windermere PD for, for trying to help us with this issue. Um, you guys are doing a great job, but unfortunately we know that the police can't be here every day and that's an unreasonable ask. Um, but unfortunately, I mean, I've lived here since 2012 and you know, it's my understanding that this data has been collected far beyond me living here and talking to neighbors who have lived here for decades, this data has continued to be collected. And unfortunately it just does not represent the reality of our situation. Um, you know, we can manipulate this data any which way, but at the end of the day, our road is not safe. And this is truly an accident waiting to happen. I mean, I have almost gotten hit by a car. My kids have almost gotten hit by a car. My dog has been hit car by a car. Um, so, I mean, we need to do something. We don't have sidewalks. So I won't even let my kids walk two houses down to their friend's house because the, they could very well be hit by a car. So um, I think the issue is far beyond speed. Um, it's more so the drivers that are coming down Oakdale street are driving recklessly and carelessly. They're not paying attention. They're rolling through the stop signs. Um, again, even at 20 miles per hour, if someone is not paying attention, going 20 miles per hour, that's unsafe and it's an accident waiting to happen. So, um, I, I recognize that we're focused on this 89% is a good thing. It's a good number, but we need to focus on the 11% that's going to get someone killed. So, um, on my side of Oakdale street on the first 600 block and, and just beyond that. Um, we've had discussions and I think everybody's on board with, you know, let's find a, a good starting place. And I think if we closed Sixth Avenue and Oakdale, similar to what you all did with the manors, then I think that that is a, a, good, a good starting point. Um, see what that does, see how that affects traffic. Um, because I truly believe that in talking to neighbors who have lived here for decades and decades, um, I think that would alleviate a lot of our concerns here. And if we need to get creative with diverting traffic down 7th, or if we see other issues pop up as a result of closing 6th in Oakdale, we can discuss that when we get there. But um, in speaking with neighbors who are heavily involved with the town, I think that there are definitely creative ways that we can divert traffic if that were to become an issue. But again, starting with 6th Avenue in Oakdale, it needs to happen. We want our neighborhoods back. We do not have sidewalks. This is a huge safety concern and someone is gonna get seriously injured. Okay. Thank you for that. So I have uh, closing just sixth in Oakdale and then possibility of adding sidewalks. Is that correct? As a starting point? I don't think that sidewalks is, is ever gonna be a legitimate uh, topic of discussion in the town of Windermere. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard on dirt roadways. No, no, no. Um, and I'm not saying we need sidewalks. I'm just yeah. saying, because we don't have sidewalks, our road needs to be safe. Right. And we need people to have to ride their bike or their scooter or walk to their friend's house without feeling like they're going to get run hit by a car. Yeah. Um, and again, this is two doors down where I'm not comfortable sending my kids without walking them over there because the way in which people drive, and again, it's not about speed. I mean, sp speed, yes, it's, it's a problem. But the fact of the matter is when you're looking at this data, the residents aren't speeding. Uh, you know, you can't you're going to get people that are flying through, but the data is never going to support that because the majority of the people are not speeding, but it's the people that are coming through from Chase Road or to Chase Road. They're driving recklessly. And even at 20 miles per hour, if you're not paying attention, it's a dangerous issue. And then. And again, yeah. the police are doing what they can do, mm -hmm. but I mean, the lack of awareness to stop signs and even those turning signs. I mean, if someone can't follow a stop sign, they're not going to follow the, the right turn only sign. It's just, it's not going to happen. I mean, we watched today 
while a police was sitting in front of my house, somebody rolled through the stop sign and it, it, they, they didn't care. They right. didn't care. And that's where we get to that 89th percentile, 85th percentile, as far as there's a, I know that all of us on here follow the law, um, but there's a certain percentage that no matter what you do, they're not going to follow the law. Um, and, you know, to your point, as far as, you know, most people are cutting through our local residents, you know, per the origin destination study that we did back in 2018, and we can probably update that next uh, fiscal year, it did show that the majority of the people that are utilizing these roadways as cut through roadways from an origin destination standpoint are the residents themselves. And people are like, well, I know my neighbors, I know their cars, uh, stuff like that, but you don't know your neighbors that are maybe on 11th. You don't know your neighbors that are on 4th. Um, and we saw the same issue on Lake um, and Magnolia. Uh, they didn't know anybody that lived, you know, um, when I said 4th, I mean Magnolia and 4th, um, that far up. So we continue to do these studies to make sure that we have the data to support what we have in case, you know, other people come up that may be opposed to your position and say, listen, yes, there is an issue. It's not just, you know, based on the squeaky wheel, it's based on actual facts. And we never manipulate data whatsoever, because again, whatever decision we make has to be based on the data uh, to make sure there's transparency. But, you know, we try to do it and DOT, all the other uh, agencies, they do it typically in the uh, winter time, like February, March, April, because that's when all the snowbirds are in town uh, and your traffic counts are going to be the highest. So uh, that's one of the reasons that we did it during this time frame and to make sure that we're trying to get as much information as possible to get this thing moving forward. But thank you for your comments and um, right. Just we'll, to, we'll take a look at that. Out one more time with the data. Yeah. I know that this data has been collected year after year for decades now. And unfortunately, like you said, like, uh, when I said manipulate, I don't mean that you, you guys are physically changing numbers because I don't yeah. believe that you would have time or money or people's time to do that. What I mean is, I mean, to say that each household makes 10 trips a day is just a ridiculous number. I mean, even five, if you cut that half to meet the 250 cars per day, that's a ridiculous number. I mean, in 2017, we had 137 cars come down per day on average. In 2022, it's 230. So that's a same amount of residents, but 93 extra cars per day. And keep in mind, so many people are still working from home, like my family, my, my sister's family, um, other neighbors that are on my street. A lot of people are working from home to have 93 cars in a world that we're living in currently extra when we had the same amount of residents in 2017. Again, it's just look at it that way. I mean, it's just a reality of the situation. It's sure. not about meeting certain standards of numbers and it's just it's it's the reality and unfortunately no matter how many times you collect this data it's never going to be in our favor we recognize that so let's do something about it and make us happy because yeah. at this point our road is not safe and we want the neighborhood back yeah and as, again when it goes to the 10 trips even if you cut that in half that's two two people going to work to and from that's four trips right there uh and then an extra trip you go to the grocery store out to eat something like that that would actually make it to six trips. So that's when I was like, okay, the 500 is like the max as far as from an engineering standpoint. If you cut that in half, that's what you're at right now with the Oakdale stats that we have. But again, I'm not here to argue the facts. I'm just trying to put everything into context when we start talking about trips and so on and so forth. But um, so your recommendations were again to do something similar to the manners and they kind of have like a firm uh, to where you can't actually cut through um and then to in close Oakdale. yeah and then close six in oakdale and then um the sidewalks are really not um yeah. an option because of the dirt roads that we currently have all right uh brandy uh hi so um you know my my I, we moved into town in 2016 and the first time i came to council about this would have been back in 2017 which is part of when everything started to kick off with the kimley horn I won't get into the weeds about the data that they did. I don't think anything was manipulated, but digging deep into the software that they utilized to track where those cars were going and coming from too, you had to have certain apps downloaded that they used that their tracking software piggybacked off of and or streetlights, which we don't have here. So I, I've never been very happy with the data from that. I, I don't think it's really representative of Florida. A lot of the apps that we checked into that people would utilize weren't even from facilities that people around here would download apps for because we just don't have the same stores because it was a California-based company that they utilize that software for. 
So I just want to say that for the record, because that thing still frustrates me and I picked it apart back then and I still have the same feelings on it. We've looked at everything from barricades to closing roads. I remember when we had the Kimley Horn meeting, we had people coming out of the woodwork at the north end of town who didn't want us to close the streets down here. So I expect we'll probably hear feedback from people like that again. But the reality is, is we are the ones who live on this street. And I also agree with it, you know, many other comments that have been said. My husband works from home. I don't work. I know a lot of people on my street who are either retired, husbands don't work or wives don't work. Lots of people working from home. And it's, it's, it's a completely different world than it was three years ago. But the, the speeding, I, I actually know how to calculate from my security cameras from point A to point B, how fast a car is moving. And when this all started, we calculated that manually ourselves. There are speeders. To this day, I still have people running the stop signs. Mine aren't a roll through. Mine are the 20 miles an hour through. Every single day almost still, it's definitely upticked in the last four to five months. Um, and I fear that if we don't do something like closing a road, it's going to take someone's child getting hit for a change to happen. So as, in terms of the barricades and figuring out how emergency traffic can get through, I remember in the early talks, there were talks, um, it might've been Brad Cornelius from Wade Trim or other people I've talked to that said there were types of barricades that you know can be put up that can be removed. I know in New York City, they have the, um, the posts around some of the federal buildings that are removable in the case of an emergency. So there are structures that will work that way to be removed in the case of a severe emergency. Um, and there was talks about the trucks, the garbage trucks, the fire trucks. We've got a 60 foot right of way. We've got plenty of turnaround space. The garbage truck does back up on ninth street as well. So like my neighbor, um, David said, that's totally true. They back up all over the place. I hear their backup beepers all the time. Um, I've always been for closing the roads. I'm glad to see we have a lot more support than we did. We've got 40 participants on today, which is a great turnout. I hope we'll have even more um, on the 26th, but it, it's an ongoing problem and the amount of population is only gonna continually to increase exponentially down in Horizons West. So we need to do something about it now. We do need the studies. We do need the, the traffic enforcement when we can have it. Um, and I, you said it when you were going through your presentation, the, the number of vehicles, it's all day. I mean, there is over, you know, X number of cars, it, it reaches that point by 9 a.m. and it stays there till like 6 p.m. There is no drop. There is no, it peaks from 7 to 9 a.m. or it peaks from 5 to 7 p.m. It is like a nine hour stretch of consistently high traffic. And I too don't think that we have people making 10 trips a day. I think it's absurd. Um, I understand that's from an engineering standpoint. I'd be curious to know if those engineering standpoint standards change with the new world of COVID and so many people working from home because I do think that that affects it. But yeah, I'm in agreement with everyone. I say close off some streets. I probably would start with six in Oakdale. Yes, it's whack-a-mole, see what, pans out, um, put temporary barricades up there, put them up for 30 days. Give your warning signs you need to let traffic know there's a temporary reroute that you need to do. Put the barricade up, close it off, and let's see how it goes. Because we're just going to keep spinning our wheels and going in circles for another five years if we don't. So your, your no. suggestion is to just is close Sixth and Oakdale. You know, with the bollards and stuff like that, we can take a look at that relative to just doing incremental and making, like, I think, Earlier in 2017, we talked about making not pocket parks, but um, just creating those little pockets where people would have to go take a right and take a left and go up. And maybe that would um, curtail some of the cut through traffic. So, I mean, um, I'm not against that idea. I thought mm -hmm. it was a good idea back then. That was one I talked extensively with Wade Trim about. I, I do know that. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure between 6th and 7th whose house it was in front of when they had the trackers there, but I do know that when people are approaching 6th Street going northbound, they're slowing to a stop because they have to turn on to 6th. If they have just left 6th and they're turned south on Oakdale and they're heading down, they haven't had a chance to pick up speed so much in that first block. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm sure they do. 
But I do know when you reach the point down here where unfortunately my house, when we bought it, didn't have trees and all my neighbors have taken out most of theirs, it is a clear path. I can stand in front of my house and I can see the traffic on 6th Street and I can see all the way to 12th. So the moment that that area opens up, people are flying. Um, and I think that the speed you're, you're capturing are, are going to be different in every stretch of the street. When you get down to the lower end, obviously like 12th to 13th is tight and no one goes really down there as much probably. 11th to 12th, they totally do. And, you know, you start to have a downhill slope and a change in topography. You have narrowing of the road and every bit of that makes a difference. And I understand from the chief's perspective, he probably wants to collect data in the same location over and over and over because then you're comparing apples to apples, but it, it's going to be slightly different on every street. Um, the other one other thing I want to make note of that I think is critically important. This is not just an Oakdale street residence problem. It is the whack-a-mole, which we've all made reference to several, several times. So the notifications, which I'm very adamant about notifications going out to people, it needs to include everyone in our lower corner of town. It, it shouldn't just stop with Oakdale. It should include Magnolia. It should include the people on Bessie. It should include the people on 7th. They all needed to be alerted to this. There's a couple people on the meeting now that are not on Oakdale, that are not on Magnolia. There are some with addresses on here that are on Bessie and East and elsewhere. They care because it, it impacts them. And it, we need to look at this as our whole corner of town. And those people need to be notified when we have anything regarding traffic. That would be my other recommendation. Cause I'm reaching out to people constantly that are two to three streets over, but they're equally as affected by whatever decisions we make about Oakdale. Okay. And we we deal with that same issue each and every meeting that we have as far as notification. You know, at right. some point, there has to be some ownership in trying to um, personally be involved in your local community and the decisions that are being made in your community. Um, you know, we go above and beyond. I'm not sure of any other communities that do this. We actually go door to door and we put up those notices on each door and say, listen, there's a meeting. Um, we have apps, we have social media, we have websites. Um, so we do as much as possible we can, you know, reasonably to get this information out there. But by all means, you know, that's why we tape these. And, you know, if you do have those people that have those same concerns uh, or want to make their voices heard, make sure that you reach out to them, make sure that you share these videos uh, or just alert them and say, hey, listen, there's a meeting coming up, so on and so forth. So uh, we appreciate that. And again, right. you'd start with the, um, you know, the incremental approach, which would be start at six in Oakdale and then go from there. Um, the only reason I brought, bring this up again, the ADPs, which is average daily trips, um, you can see that it's, it's, these are per hour. So, you right. know, you look at 20 cars per hour, um, you know, that, that's what it looks like. When you take a look at it, you see this huge increase and stuff like that. That's 20 cars per an entire hour uh, during those times. And again, everybody brings up the, the, the trips per day. Um, you know, the climate that we're in can change three years from now. Um, you may have retirees that are right there right now, but that could change two years from now. You know, they can move out, go to a, a condo on the beach, and then you have um, you know, new people come in. Um, so again, we're cognitive of the fact that we have current residents, but we also have to be cognitive of the fact that we're gonna have new residents as well. And also the climate is always changing too, but we'll, we'll, we'll note some of your comments and then again, include that in some of the, maybe the survey monkeys that we do. Um, for the residents in that quadrant, and then also maybe do a secondary one that goes out to everybody in the area. Thank you, Brandy. Yep, thank you. All right, uh, Gavin D. Hi, Robert, this is Brad. Uh, Brad and Laurel Gavin. We've been at the corner of 12th and uh, Oakdale for 22 years. So we are right at the bank turn, if you will, where dust flies when cars spin their wheels around the corner. So here's kind of the logic. If, um, if cars in the morning are coming up chase, turning left on main, and then attempting to turn right on sixth, what happens in the morning is cars go straight on 12th, they spin their tires around our corner up Oakdale, and then they hit the, two stop, hit the two stop signs on the northern end, okay? So in the evening, they turn left on 6th, 
And as Brandy and Melania have said, they hit, they don't have a chance to pick up speed yet. They hit the two stop signs. Once they clear that second stop sign, and I've stood at my mailbox and I've watched cars pick up speed, pick up dust. And I even step in the road and they continue to go fast. I'm saying like 30 miles an hour. Yeah. And they're trying to just get through that stretch, spin their tires around the corner and then get to the stop sign at Chase. I mean, that's, that's the route. Oakdale Street is the escape from having to go through that paved road uh, two turns. So I don't want to reiterate what everyone else has said, but this 11%, those cars that are going 20 miles an hour faster, uh, they're going a lot faster once they get down on the south end of Oakdale. And so logic to me says you call the sack or block off Chase and 12th and 6th and Oakdale. Okay. And just the the danger that we have experienced. And all it's going to take, yeah. I think Brandy said it, all it's going to take is one child to get run over mm -hmm. and shame on all of us for not fixing it. Right. And then one thing that was brought up too, again, is stop signs. Everybody believes that stop signs, if you put a stop sign at every single intersection, that that'll cure the problem. Um, Again, studies have shown you guys can do your own independent studies that typically isn't the case it actually increases the speed because people try to make it that time going from one stop sign to the other mm -hmm. um, and the reason we know this is because of you know some of the issues and uh, lessons that we've learned from forest and second uh, with the two speed humps that we have and the stop signs right after they leave that stop sign that other speed bump they can then try to make up that time and they accelerate Exactly. So that's really not the um, best way to, and then for the MUTCD, MUTC standards, that's really not the best way to calm traffic. Um, but, you know, we can take a look at, again, the road closures that everybody's been talking about tonight. Well, Robert, this is Laurel. This is Brad's wife. And like Brad's, Hello. hi, we've lived here 22 years. And uh, we are Windermereans, whatever you want to call us. But the sad part about all this is that your data cannot show the attitudes and the anger of these drivers. They are, they're, they're, it's unbelievable. Every one of these residents that have experienced going out to their mailbox or going for a walk with their dogs can tell you that these people are mad. They're they're impatient. They are, um, they're, they're dangerous. And uh, we have all experienced close calls from uh, walking our dogs to taking our grandkids out for a walk. The last two years, we cannot believe in, um, again, thank you to the police that have helped us out. But the last two years, we have seen such road rage like I've never seen before. Um, maybe with the pandemic or whatever it is, but the anger from these drivers, uh, they, we are the ones that are inconveniencing them. We are the ones, if we are in the street there, it's just awful. And all we can tell you is our experiences that none of this data is going to show. Right. And it is what we're all expressing that it is we, to watch our kids and our grandkids and our dogs, this is our community. This is our neighborhood. This is where we've lived for 22 years and we don't plan on going anywhere yet. It's just been awful the last two years, like truly beyond words. So even though the data shows, they can't show the anger of these drivers and flipping us off, calling us the F word, you name it. Um, I even one time was on a walk with my dog and I had my earphones in and I did not hear the Tesla behind me. And so when I, he then honked his horn, when I realized I jumped out of the way, he tried to hit me. He literally tried to come up and bump me. And again, that's not on the data. Um, right. And that's just one of every one of these residents can tell you. So we, as uh, you know, 22 year vets, 
would love to see these roads close. We do not want all those young families up there close to Main Street um, have anything happen. We don't want our neighbors who have small kids playing in the dirt roads. That's, what, that's why we chose Windermere 22 years ago. And we just hope that you hear us and that's truly something done. And we thank you so much for taking this time and listening to all of us. We really do appreciate it. So thank you. No, you're welcome. And again, that's the whole purpose of these meetings is to get the public input. We're not trying to steer you one way or the other. Um, all we can do is provide facts and then get that response back from you. And again, that's great responses. I would let you know, never engage anybody. Uh, if they are speeding, um, that can go south pretty quickly. Uh, oh, but if oh, anybody yeah. were to try to yeah. hit you, make sure that you get the license plate number and we'll make sure that we get it to the police department and take care of that. And again, this should go without saying that if something like that happens, don't post it on next door or anything like that. Contact right. the police department first so we can try to solve the issue and, yes. and get it taken care of. Um, yes. Because a lot of people, they'll, they'll post something on social media first. No. And later on, we hear about it. We're like, well, we should have contacted us and we'll be more than happy to uh, solve that case for you. But again, um, yeah, just never interact. Um, you know, just document and then let us know and we'll see what we can do about it because it's just going to, um, you don't want to get in that situation. We had a situation like that when we did the 2018 study, I think it was. Uh -huh. uh, and we had Operation Dusty Roads, and we had a negative interaction between a female and a male, and we don't want to have that again. Robert, you're Thanks. more than welcome to come and visit us and sit in. We have comfortable chairs, sit in our driveway and watch what happens. It is truly way more than what you could ever imagine. And so thank you so much. No worries. And but I, I get people giving me the finger all the time. Oh, the uh, let's hope not. <laughs> Well, Robert, I'm a big, yes, I'm a big guy and I've been at my mailbox and cars picking up speed coming at me. And, you know, I, that confrontation that you're talking about is, um, is what's going to happen next because I, yeah. I just can't resist the temptation to, uh, to try to do something about it. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. I think it's a good time to let everybody know this is being recorded and we'll be posted on our YouTube page so um he's kidding <laughs> i can't see sarcasm through this oh my gosh he's <laughs> kidding oh my word uh, i wasn't kidding about the finger though i get that all the time um Brittany, um oh i'm sorry Brit before you get on Brittany, i think i've already asked you some questions or you had an opportunity to, to, to speak let me get to amy dietrich real quick hi robert amy Hey, um, I think we, you know, the point is clear and I think all the neighbors, you know, agree on um, what we'd like to see occur, but just wanted to touch base about like next steps. So from here, um, what can we do with this information? Does this get brought to town council so we can talk further? Uh, we'll do the second workshop on the 26th. Um, and then after that, we'll go to long range planning. Uh, that's the committee that used to be like the traffic committee and mm -hmm. they'll discuss it and make recommendations based on all this input. Um, and we'll have that in a Zoom format as well. Um, the reason for that, again, to get more participation. Um, and then whatever the recommendations are, we'll probably take it to a workshop with town council, have them hammer it out, and then take it to a formal town council meeting where they'll actually adopt it. Um, so so it's, it's not something that's gonna happen in a month, but you're probably looking at uh, 90 days. And in between that time frame, you know, what, what's good is you'll have the summertime, so hopefully you have a little bit of calm, uh, but that'll give us time to make those changes if they're going to be approved uh, in time for the fall session of school and stuff like that, because typically we see a drop down in traffic during the summertime. Okay, sense? thank you. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So we will be able to participate in the long, long range uh, planning meeting as well. Any meeting you can participate in. Uh, that's why we have public comment. You have your three minutes, but with these types of public meetings, uh, it's unlimited. So you're not under a time frame. So mm -hmm. you don't have to defer or anything like that. We just give you as much time as you want uh, to let us know what your issues are and what some of your solutions are too. Because what we like is just not hearing the complaints, but we like hearing what are possible solutions. Because if we had a magic wand, definitely we would stop the traffic and cut the traffic. It's just a matter of trying to balance, okay, well, what do the residents want versus what they don't want? Um, and also, you know, try to relieve some of that pressure that y'all are uh, feeling right now. So thank you, Amy. 
All right, we are solution seekers, Robert, as you can see. So Absolutely. I feel like we've come up with some good solutions tonight. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Joanne Gatlin, or is that Roger? Joanne or Roger? Hi, it's Roger. And hey, Roger. Hi. I'm the LRP, by the way, everybody. <laughs> uh, so I'm just wanting people that I, I think they understand closing Oakdale at six. I'm not opposed to that. I live on the south end of Oakdale. But it would obviously increase traffic on 7th and Magnolia, possibly Bessie too, because uh, actually sometimes I come home, I just like to drive along the lake. I do drive slowly, but uh, I'm not working, so I don't come all the time. I'll come down Bessie and down along the lakes. And, but you'll, you'll, you'll impact those people. So it's, uh, it is important to make sure they understand and not are notified they may not like closing Oakdale at six. If I was living, if I was living on Magnolia near seven, you know, I wouldn't like the diversion of traffic that'll cause. I don't know, Robert, if you want to bring all the, you know, long range planning, we had the diversion uh, plan that wasn't implemented, but uh, might want to bring that back just for a look again, whether that would do any, do any good. Yeah, well, yeah, there's no option that's off the table at this point. It's just a matter of figuring out what the residents want versus what we can do yeah. from a logistical standpoint, I it's guess. Closing 12th at, at Chase and Main, uh, it'll help there, but in the morning when the people going north on Main can easily, you know, cut over on 11th, 10th, 9th, whatever, to get to Oakdale. And I don't know that it will, how much it'll be hard to determine how much it'll help. It, it can just shoot up Oakdale to seventh, cut over to Magnolia, and you've got the same situation of people will find that route. So uh, we'll somehow have to study and maybe traffic engineers look at closing Oakdale at six. Um, does it really stop a lot of traffic on Oakdale? I'm not, I'm not sure in the morning that it would seem that people could still cut over to Oakdale and go up that way. It just makes it a little harder. Um, anyway, great presentation. I'll look forward to uh, seeing it at long range planning <laughs> eventually. I'm sure you will. But again, now we'll have a lot of public input and say, listen, you know, this is something that we have support for from um, the residents that live along the roadway and also Magnolia um, and some of the ancillary roadways that might be a part of that natural progression as far as the domino effect of traffic moving from one roadway to another roadway to another roadway. Uh, so incorporate their comments as well. So thank one you, of the problems I did want to mention, it's <clears throat> observational, but one reason there's so much backup on Maine um, going north is there's so much more traffic on Maine coming south. And so they're hitting the same roundabout and you've got to wait to see, are they going all the way around or going on straight down Maine. And so there's a lot of, I've noticed there's a lot of pausing of people stopping, going northbound on Maine, get to the roundabout at six. They could make a right turn, but being cautious, they're waiting to see if the car's coming around and there's so much more traffic from the north. I don't know if that's going to continue to increase as much, but I think some people are diverting where they have a choice. In fact, I have a friend that lives over on 535 and he has a choice almost. It's a little shorter coming down Chase, but he'll come around the Northway side because it's a little less traffic. But right. as things develop in the future, that roundabout's gonna get so tied up, it's just you know, gonna be more and more frustrating for people. Yeah, not looking at adding like a huge roundabout like what we had in Clearwater Beach probably about 15 years ago. What you're looking at is probably uh, reducing the width of the uh, median per se and adding again that, that continuous uh, southbound. Uh, kind of like we see over at um, Roberson and um, the name is escaping me right now. One of but the, yeah, one of the new ones that was just put in by. Um, Bailey Park. Uh, uh, there's the larger ones with the two lanes. E even if there was 
bigger where there was more distance between the intersection coming into a roundabout, you don't have much time to figure out when someone's coming around that roundabout which exit they're taking. Signal, you just have to wait till you can see that well, they're going to continue south on May, so I can make my right on six. And right. it's hard on these small roundabouts. Right. Well, thank you, Roger. And look okay. forward to our discussion at LRP. All right, uh, Brittany, I'm going to come back to you. I didn't want to skip you. You had an additional comment, or has it been addressed? Oh, I just had a question, but Amy um, asked. Okay. I'm sorry. Did anybody, was she breaking up for everybody else or just me? She said Amy asked her question that she was going to. Oh, okay. All right, great. All right, we have Council Member Martini on the line. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you, Robert, for presenting this meeting. And I, I want to thank all the residents for uh, showing up here. I'm really impressed with the number of people that have. Uh, joined this meeting. I think we've got 44 or 45 people. And um, uh, rest assured, we're going to do whatever we can to fix this problem. It's, it's uh, you know, it may be painful, uh, may be inconvenient. Um, I, I think we should experiment like we did with Ridgewood Drive. We, we had very similar issues for years with Ridgewood. Uh, <clears throat> the data that was collected in my mind didn't match the reality uh as well i've i've actually been you know flipped off more times than i could count i was assaulted once uh by a person who was speeding and uh so i would recommend not interacting with with people i would recommend calling the uh, non-emergency police number and uh, robert if you can post that on the chat that would be great um that will give us you know more um <clears throat> evidence to follow through with a, with a good solution for that. There is, I think there is a solution out there. Um, it, it may be inconvenient. Uh, initially, um, we have the no turn between four and seven signs for Ridgewood, and it, it's a pretty elegant solution. It, it has cut down on probably 80% of our cut through traffic. We still have a number of people who ignore the sign and come through and you know the chief has occasional enforcement out there which which uh, helps to curtail that but it, you know it has it's all about safety it's all about making sure that you know the residents are safe so um i i apologize for being late on this meeting but uh i don't know if has, has anyone discussed partitioning like uh like small sections of that quadrant of town like perhaps closing Oakdale Street at 9th Avenue, which would essentially resolve um, all of the cut through traffic from there south to 12th, because there'd be no reason for people to, to cut down uh, Oakdale Street because they'd just be forced back onto Main Street. Uh, it's a rhetorical question at this point, but um, uh, well, I think that would fix that portion of it. Obviously, it would increase traffic uh, north of there, but you know we can work on solutions to to do that. And like Roger said, if you close sixth at Oakdale, uh, I mean, you close uh, Oakdale at Sixth Avenue, it, you know, it's like water. They're going to find the the next uh, <clears throat> uh, least traffic route. They're going to go down Seventh or Magnolia, that type of thing. So. Um, I just ask for everybody's patience in, in figuring this out. I say, let's experiment. Let's, let's go back to the, to the, um, uh, diversion plan, maybe revisit that and put up some temporary barriers and, uh, let's play whack-a-mole with cut through people and move those around and see what works best for us and the town and the residents. All right. Thank you. Council member Martini. All right, let me get to some of the uh, comment section. I have 70 comments, so uh, we'll go through those and hopefully there's some questions in there. Um, we can't count on the police to be present constantly. I think I read that one. How many tickets have been issued on Oakdale for speed or running stop signs over the past three months? I don't know if Chief or uh, Sergeant Bonk have that information really available, but um, I know they're on and you know, maybe we want to get their perspective as well, as far as uh, enforcement and some of the issues that they've seen along Oakdale. So Chief, I'll 
afford you this uh, um, time as well as Sergeant Bach, any additional comments? Sure, Robert, thanks, I appreciate it. I, I didn't bring the data as far as how many tickets have been written, so Sergeant Bonk may have a little bit more than that. I do know in 2018, 2019, we worked in overtime detail. All that was posted uh, when we worked the, uh, the details themselves. Um, Zipping. You know, uh, we do ask our, uh, ask our officers to be out there uh, as often as they can um, to do the traffic enforcement. And um, so again, we just didn't collect that data for tonight's um, as far as how many in Oakdale. That's readily available to us. We can kind of pull it up on a CAD system and take a look at it. Uh, should we need to do that for the next meeting? All right, thank you, Chief. And we'll, we'll do that for the 26th. Um, from Jim and Peg, Oakdale was never meant for cut through traffic. Uh, the dust at 15 is horrendous, long, let alone 25 and higher, which I believe happens. Orange County Club closed off streets. From Colonial Drive, why can't we? And again, that's what we discussed. 11 percent cars going upwards at 20 miles an hour is a large potential hazard. Other in the corner of Oak and 12, high speed cars pick up speed as they approach this corner. We've lived here or lived on this corner for 20 plus years. And we've heard that in the last two years, drivers are getting very aggressive. Uh, 10th in the morning is an issue. Uh, this is from Alan Chase with the middle school bus with the cut through. Sometimes the bus is made to back up due to people blowing stop sign and whipping around the corner. Um, so Chief, maybe we need to get some details uh, over at that stop sign area during that time frame, especially when the uh, schools they're picking up or dropping off. Noted. Uh, 137 cars in 2019, now 2030. How many next year to be determined? Can we make the speed limit lower? No. Um, it, it, it was hard enough to make it 15, um, and it's going to be harder to drop that even further. You need a, a study to justify that uh, in order to enforce it in traffic court. So it, it's very hard uh, for something like that to happen. And I think Chief can attest to that as well. Yeah, Robert, and if I could interject, uh, I, mean, I don't think that the entire design here for tonight, I'm not concerned about this, but I just want folks to know that We've gone through three different speed measuring devices over the year, and the 2016 and 2017 data is a one-way device. So those numbers there are all one way. So as you know, I'm not saying you could double it. We probably just about could, um, but I just want to kind of make that notation here, notation to everybody. Thanks, Chief. Um, corners are certainly an issue, as I've attested many times. Uh, Joe lives on the corner of the Bessie and Six. Uh, we need to get our neighborhood back. This is within our town of Windermere. It's our neighborhood, not a cut through. Thank you so much for hearing us and helping us. Much appreciated. Uh, we're officially requesting that you close 6th and Oakdale. Let's see how this impacts the cut through traffic, the safety issue for our children. Uh, let's start with the one place. Uh, Mr. Sharp makes a very good point. If these drivers can't even follow a stop sign. Uh, yes, we want to block the roadways. 6th and Oakdale needs to be closed. Love the closing all of 6th. I love it too. We agree to close off Oakdale on 6th and 12th and Chase. And just so you know, when we record these, we do annotate and record the uh, chat messages as well. Uh, over 50 homes, 39 are present. That should speak volumes. Uh, I don't see 12th as an issue if there's no exits on 6th. Uh, pole barriers, removable for traffic diversion. Again, those are the ballers that you typically see. Uh, we're actually looking at those for um, Old Brick Main in front of the town square. Uh, whenever we have events or anything like that, we want to make sure that we have um, both areas flanked in case you know uh, a car wants to cut through or uh, maybe divert and get into there. Um, well said, uh, Milani. We agree 100%. Agree with Milani and 12th. Agreed. Robert, all due respect, but we need to move on this in an expeditious manner. Um, have physically pulled and pushed my kid out of the way to avoid accidents. Uh, closing six in Oakdale will just put people on seven. Probably need to look at six. Well said, Milani. Completely agree. I agree with all six. Uh, there's a lot of cut through traffic that turns on seventh and goes all the way down sixth. 11% uh, of 8,000 trips to 80 over going over 19 miles an hour. That should be unacceptable to all of us. I want to thank you all for participating, strength in numbers. We may not all agree on everything, but we can all agree that our children and animals need protection. It was in front of mine right before a stop sign, creating some plan, a council member or previous council member and it, uh, creating some pain uh, for non-residents who drive through our town by street collision and other methods that reduce their ability to cut through on Oakdale could elevate the demand and urgency for the county to build alternative routes. That is ultimately what uh, 
will be needed as uh, neighboring development continues. And believe me, I've had many discussions with uh, Wilson on this, who is our district one commissioner. Um, so when you have the opportunity, again, um, there is strength in numbers, um, not only for this issue, but other issues that we're currently dealing with, uh, you know, whether it be uh, Bird Island or, or um, other issues that you have in district one, just make sure that you're reaching out to your district one commissioner. They have more, um, I would say sway in what develops in Horizons West as far as the entitlements, the, the way that um, roads are constructed, roads are maintained. Um, you know, a lot of it has those floodgates have opened back when that sector plan was approved. Uh, but any and all, you know, comments should be directed to um, either Commissioner uh, Wilson or all the commissioners and Mayor Demings as well to say, listen, we need some relief here because, you know, when you take a look at the big map of our surrounding area, um, again, the parallel relievers are so far apart that even if we were to, you know, constrain somebody by about 30 seconds, it's still not going to direct them to utilize that parallel reliever or parallel reliever if it's going to just move them three minutes out of their way. So any and all communication that we can have with our local commissioners is going to be great. Uh, good point, Liz. Yes, agreed, Liz. Totally agree, Liz. Really popular. Uh, Robert, is the next step bringing our points, concerns to town council meeting? How do we move forward? I think we already addressed that. It's going to go to another uh, public meeting, and then we're going to go to uh, LRP, then town council. Uh, this is the best that it'll ever be. As the town continues to develop, the horizon West continue to grow at a fast pace. They only get worse. Agreed. Uh, we have to close our roads before something somebody seriously gets hurt. Uh, that is 25.9 cars a day that over 20 or over every day. Okay, you're talking about uh, over the speed limit. Yeah, I was just saying 20, there's with 238 cars on average per day. We have 25.9 cars that are going more than the 20 miles per hour or higher. Uh, and, I'm not, and I'm not including the anomalies that were up there in the 60 mile per hour range. Uh, the stop signs may as well be invisible. We need to close the road. Again, agree with Laurel. The rage, road rage down our street is out of control. I've uh, been given the fingers sworn at uh, the accelerations. Uh, neighborhood is near, nearly accosted. Agree. Been called names from walking dogs. 6.45 a.m. The runabout isn't even backed up then. Yes, Laurel, we're exactly right. So. Uh, this is Stacy with the little fluorescent uh, slow kid. This is expensive, by the way. Um, I thought it was the one on Amazon. I think they're like forty or fifty dollars. But yeah, no, um, people just completely ignore those things. Um, Amy asked a good question. We would love an in-person meeting, Robert. No problem. I'm very accessible. Uh, starting someplace then is better than doing nothing. comprehensive plan for the whole town meeting, uh, working on uh, one ways, um, traffic plans. And oh my gosh, I might be into this. All right, the non-emergency number is posted on the chat by Tanya. Again, uh, a lot of people are agreeing to the cut throughs. It's okay, Brittany, I understand. I, I, did, I know you weren't switching the chief. So the APB that we have out for uh, your car is going to be uh, shut down. Uh, the 10 delay trip data isn't reliable. Our family probably takes 10 trips, but agreed. You know, even if we do that, reduce that into half, it's still about 200 free trips a day. And again, that's, you know, if your significant other doesn't work and they give the kids to and from school, that's four trips right there. And same thing with going to and from work, that's two trips. Um, so with my household, again, going in to and from work and then uh, maybe a trip to the grocery store, we're probably looking at between six and eight trips a day. Uh, but even if we were to cut no, that I, in half, you're looking at five. But, but my point is simply that as the neighbors that you're considering, we don't actually drive over that test strip. I drove over that maybe 10% of the time because the only people who would be neighbors who are going to be driving over that are the people living in between the two nearest exits. Most of us get off the dirt road as soon as we can, or at least a lot of us do. So I never run over that test strip, but you're counting me for, for, for 10 
trips a day in that analysis. No, I'm just saying that from an engineering standpoint, what they do is they, they use a, a number that they generally use as an industry standard, and I'm cutting that in half. Um, so when you leave your house, go to work, that's actually two trips because you're leaving and coming back. The same thing, you know, if you're sniffing another work, six kids to school, that's how they count those is going leaving and coming back. It's just not, you know, one trip that you take, meaning back and forth. That's not one trip. That's actually two trips. The same thing we had to do with the analysis when we we're looking at the 500 block. When everybody saw the 40 trips, you know, for the three hour period, and it got broken down to maybe 12 trips per hour. Um, and that's people leaving and coming into that location. So that's what the only try, thing I was trying to clarify, not saying that you leave, um, you know, that everybody fits into that one, 10 trips per day. Um, you, know, it, it, it's, you know, it's always a factor on, you know, COVID, working from home, stuff like that. But the industry standard is 10, but if we did five and we looked at all the homes down there, uh, you're looking at 250 trips per day just for those five trips but you know i understand your point and um julie noted hey robert can i have a second sure uh, I, th I think it's a point of order and just to help when we put the strips out those are going to be the devices that uh, the windmere police department does those are those are certainly just for that particular location um uh, again like robert said the the data is coming generically from the traffic engineers number one and then I know Brandy referred to um, the traffic study earlier. Those are different than our study. The traffic study that they did earlier, they took a, a conglomerate amount of number based on individuals, um, uh, some GPS signals or, or their phone apps that were coming off. So the completely different numbers and data is where those come from. Um, so anytime you see our device that's out there, we're just specifically measuring uh, at 8th and Oakdale would be an example. We're just looking at the traffic data right there and nowhere else. And again, just kind of a point of order for everybody because there's so many different, um, we've really done so many different um, data collection points. I think sometimes it gets confusing for everybody. Yeah, and I think we've gone through a lot of the chat questions. I think I went through all of them. Sorry that I hear, I sound staticky. Um, my kids thought it'd be funny to pour, I think, glitter sand into the, um, I guess the, voice receptor portion of my laptop. So whenever I move it, it sounds like there's sand uh, going from one end to the other. So I'll definitely have to invest into a new laptop. Um, thank you all for again, joining tonight. And again, we're gonna be putting this on our YouTube page um, to make sure that everybody um, has an ability to watch it, to digest the data. And then any additional data that um, was brought up tonight, we'll make sure that we um, uh, include that uh, on the 26th discussion, as well as onto our um, social media um, um, output that we put out there as far as, you know, uh, the meeting tonight, and then also additional data that uh, we may have not included in the agenda that you guys have requested. <clears throat> um, is there anything else? I think we have pretty much consistency um, as far as the, the viewpoint, as far as, you know, a possible solution, as, you know, looking at closing off um, at least six in Oakdale first, and then maybe seven or not seven, but, um, uh, Magnolia and then moving over to Bessie and potentially looking at also, uh, 12th and Oakdale, um, to maybe close those off. So, uh, that seems to be the consistent viewpoint right now. And we'll definitely take a look at that prior to October 20, October 26th, but April 26th, um, so we can have further discussions relative to how that would work and logistically and whether or not we'd have enough spacing for a uh, turnaround for either emergency vehicles or what a uh, type of you know barricade or barrier we put up um, in those locations. Okay, anybody else? All right. Again, I just want to thank Councilmember Martini, other council members that are on right now. I know Andy Williams is on. Um, past council member Chris Sapp is on as well. Uh, Chief Ogden, Sergeant Bonk, um, uh, Public Works Director Tanya Elliott Moore. Uh, a lot of you are a part of that uh, Bessie Basin that we're working on for stormwater improvements. I can tell you right now, we're continuously working with the Department of Emergency Management to move that project along. Uh, we were given uh, three to six months as far as a 
window of review. We're trying to accelerate that as much as possible by it being a thorn in their side um, and contacting them on a weekly basis to see where we are in the review process. Because as we, the further we get along, the more prices go up and we wanna make sure we get those um, uh, projects taken care of. In addition to that, we've actually started requesting more appropriations from the federal government uh, to implement the portable water supply plan that we uh, had approved some time ago. So um, we're working hard on that, but just stay tuned on the Bessie Basin stormwater projects that we're working on. In addition to this uh, discussion, uh, when we get to uh, the possibility of closing off some roadways. If there's nothing else, um, it is about 7.45. Thank you all again for uh, spending your Wednesday evening with us. Um, and who is it that wanted me to stop by for maybe a glass of tea and get people to yell at me? Wasn't that Laura and... Yeah, that was uh, Laurel, my wife. This Laurel. Is okay, yeah, Laurel. Okay. Yeah, come on down. So, we'll so you can come to 1003 Oakdale Street for wine if you're interested in that. <laughs> Just for the record. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for all you've water. done. All right. So the Sullivans definitely are number one, and then Laurel, oh. and then maybe number two. You know, they have uh, they celebrate Wine Thirty. Wine Thirty every, every evening. I understand. So okay. Not right. every evening. Well, Only okay. Hard liquor at my house. Oh. oh. Nice. Jeez, man, we're, I have to, ethically, you know, as far as the gifting and stuff like that, we have to work out that situation, but I'll be more happy to visit some of your locations and maybe you need to Uber ride home. But again, thank you all for attending tonight. This is probably one of the most uh, well-attended meetings that we've had. And again, the engagement that you have gives us the most um, feedback, which is definitely what we need um, in these meetings. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy days to do this. And again, um, make sure your neighbors know about the other, the next meeting that's gonna be on the 26th. So thank you all and enjoy your evening um, and happy Easter um, to all of you that celebrate it. So thank you again. <laughs>